In this video, we're going to take a look at some awesome menus with Ocean WP. It has some really cool features baked in, and I want to go over the mega menu stuff, which I've been using for a client recently. So I thought I would share some of the wisdom because it took me a while to figure it out. There's some tips on the Ocean WP website, but coming from someone who's just done it, I think will be a lot easier for you guys to use this. So if you're looking at creating some cool sort of drop down menus with a lot of information in them, if you have some big sub menus that you want to break up and make look better, then mega menus are a really good way to do that. You can also add buttons and images and any other content, HTML content um, or widget content in the mega menu in any particular column you want which is really cool. It's quite flexible. The only thing restricted is kind of the design of the mega menu. From what I can see, I actually coded a lot of mine by hand, but the basic one is pretty good. So I've made an example, and this is it here. The click here button doesn't look very good because I haven't styled it. It's gone full height. We would have to restrict the height of that, but I've basically created a standard Ocean WP menu with a mega menu drop down from the services section here. And I've styled it a little bit uh, to get rid of some of the borders and stuff I didn't like and colored it according to my brand colors. So a lot of this stuff you can do in the customizer, but I'm gonna show you both of those things and how I constructed this. I'm not gonna construct it all from scratch to save us all a little bit of time. I'm gonna show you the different elements you need and the settings you can control so that you can create a mega menu too. Ready? Let's go. All right. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have your pages and stuff set up that you wanna put in the mega menu or at least a couple of them so that you can start constructing a standard WordPress menu. All of this stuff is done in the WordPress menu area. So under appearance menus, if you haven't done that before, and you want to then go to where you want the mega menu to appear. So in my case, it was in the services section. So if we jump back here and have a look again, you'll see it's under the services section. And then we have two, uh, three columns. Two columns have links, link one and link two, link three and link four. So that's column one, that's column two, and this last one is column three, which doesn't have any menu items under it, but in its settings, I've connected it to a widget area, which is also under appearance. So of course, you've got widgets here under appearance, and I'll show you that last. So when you're constructing your mega menu, you need to think about where it's going to be from a drop down. So you create kind of a normal drop down like you would in WordPress. But the main difference is you need to construct some sort of sub menu areas called columns. So it's basically another level of sub menu. So the first level is how many columns you want. So ignore these links and just go, okay, I want three columns, column one, column two, column three. So you create those as just submenu items and the best way to do it is to just use custom links. So you just go in here and I just put in the hash because in HTML that means a click anchor which goes to a part of your page. But because it's not set up, there's no word after the hash, nothing happens when you click on it. And then I just put in my text, though in this case we won't be using the link. So it doesn't matter what you call it. I just don't think you can save it if it's empty. Let's see, it doesn't allow you to save it. You have to have something in there. So to be safe, I put the hash in there because that works in HTML. And then I just label my columns one, two, and three. So you wanna create as many of these as you're gonna have columns in your mega menu. So for all your links to line up. So create those as I've done here and then slide them under your menu. If you haven't done that before, you just grab a menu and then you just slide until the dotted line just moves inwards once. And once you've got a few, it can move in another level as well. But at first you just go in one level and then you drop it. And then always remember to make things visible and to test them, you always need to click save menu. Otherwise, nothing will happen on your site. You may have done all of this and it may be here, 
But if you don't save it, it won't show. And if you leave the page, you'll lose it all. So always remember to periodically press the save menu. Good tip. So you create your columns using custom links. Then you can put in the pages you want to appear under each column, just using the normal drag and drop again, but you want to make sure it, it, it indents underneath the column. So each column has the pages you want to appear under it. If you're going to put widgets under it, buttons and pictures and whatever you want to put in there, then you don't need to do that. It's just for the pages. Now I would suggest you do equally sized columns. So try and get the number of links per column equal. Um, and if it gets too long, your mega menu, you can make it a little bit wider. It depends on how many words you have. You have to play around with it a little bit, but just try and keep it looking evenly spaced and nice from a design perspective. So you could have 221 or 222 or whatever you're going to have, but just try and have them equally spaced. So you make your columns, you move your links underneath. And in this case, I've created custom links. They don't go anywhere, but if you have pages, you can grab them from your pages or post list or categories list or whatever you want to put under there. You can put anything in the menu like you normally would in WordPress. So setting up the mega menu, you do that under the main area that's got the mega menu under it, in which case, in this case, I should say, not in which case, it's the mega menu is under services. So we look under the settings of the main menu here and we check enable mega menu. And then the other one we absolutely have to check. So let's just undo these other two so I can show you is we need to set the number of columns because that's going to space everything out according to what we'd visualized and created with these columns underneath. If you do this wrong, then it'll all go skewed. So just make sure you try and get the number right here. We wanted three columns, so we type in three, pretty simple, and we press save. And then we go back to our home page, and I'm going to show you what happens with those other settings turned off. I've just tweaked it a little bit. They're not a big deal. So now we get a full width mega menu. It goes the full width of your header section. And as you can see, it looks a bit wide because our menu items only have one word in them. If you have really long, wordy page titles and stuff, then you might want a wider mega menu. That's the default. If you don't like that, so we've got our three columns as I set up, and we've got full width, which is default. And what is also default is to put the name of the columns on top. Now, if the column names are meaningful in your case, and you want to actually put a label on those that's not just column, but is actually a kind of link which belongs under the main menu, then give it a meaningful name and relabel the menus in the menu here. So if this was, for example, um, for me, SEO services and then WordPress services, these first two columns, I would go into my menu and I would edit this and I would type in SEO and then I would type in uh, WordPress. So they're the main services. If you ever need me, they're the main things that I do for my clients. So then while that's saving, I'm just going to refresh this. Hopefully it's saved. So now you can see my sections have titles that are appropriate to the links under them. Hopefully, obviously the links here are completely useless. So you hopefully get the picture. So that's one thing you can do. But if all the links have no kind of subcategory, if they all belong to the main link on top, if they're all services and there's no point giving them a label, what you can do is go back to the mega menu options and click disable, uh, sorry, hide mega menu heading. Another one you might want to check is the disable link. If the services itself is not a page, it's just a container for your mega menu and you don't want anyone to actually go anywhere when they click on it, then you want to disable that link too. Otherwise, when you click on services, it's going to take people to the services page, which it's just done now, and there's nothing there. Maybe there'll never be anything there. And if that's the case for you, then you want to also check the disable link one. So we're going to hide the main menus and we're going to disable the main services link and we're going to auto width the mega menu, which means it's not going to be full width anymore. It's going to be about the right width 
to keep the links well spaced, which is also something you can set up in the customizer. So if we go back to the home page here and just quickly refresh that, you'll now see the mega menu is as wide as I've set the links to be, which is a lot smaller, which is good. And we've gotten rid of the headings because they weren't meaningful. Okay, they were, but maybe they're not for you. And now the services link is not clickable. This page is not reloading. So before it took us to a page with widgets, now it's not taking us anywhere. It's not doing anything because we've disabled the link. So it's kind of like a placeholder just meant to contain this mega menu. So that's a really nice setting you can have. Three columns, disabled link, auto width, and no headings. That's quite a common setting, I would say. So that's a basic mega menu setup that you would want to have. And the last column, if you want to put widgets in, you basically have to choose under the column which widget area the mega menu should go and grab the code from, so or the, the widgets. So I've set up a basic text widget, which is something you can put HTML into. And I put I grabbed an elemental link from a page I built and just grabbed the button. If you don't know how to do HTML, you're going to wait, want to make sure you have plugins that give you widgets that you can drop in here. You can put in pictures. You can put in anything. It just depends on your skills as a developer. You can type in um, images. If you don't know the image tag, that's uh, IMG. And then you do source equals and then the location of the image. And you can do uh, width or you can do a style and set width as well in here to 300 pixels, for example. So you can do anything in here in HTML if you know how to do all of that stuff. If you don't, you'll need to make sure the widgets are available in here. And then whatever I put in here and save gets loaded in this last column. And it was a button in that case. So for my client, I did that. They wanted on every mega menu a main call to action button to call them always in the mega menu. So we always put that on the right hand side using the widget and I pre-programmed the widget and loaded it in here. So that's really, really powerful for the mega menu as well. It creates a really customizable option. And just to finally give you one more breakdown of what I did, we have the customizer open and I went into the header section and the menu section. And I just did some uh, alignment stuff here. I did the brackets, which puts this square around here. You can change that, obviously, if you want. I changed the colors. I changed the spacing of the links a little bit to give us a bit more space in the top here. I didn't want it all sort of squashed over here. It doesn't make any sense if you've only got four links. If you've got more links, then you want it to be more squashed. I changed the font, which I think is under the topography heading. So you need to go back out into topography to get to that. I changed it to be 18 or 20 pixels and semi-bold because it makes it more readable. And I also would like to make these links more bold, but I'm not sure how to do that off the top of my head. I would need to investigate or do that in CSS. So that gets a little bit tricky, but you can change all of your drop-down styles in here, your border color, which is the border at the top here. And I got rid of the in-between borders of the elements because normally there's a kind of a gray border. I'll just show you that. You can see this gray border, which I think is ugly. So I just made it white, which is all Fs. Just makes it look a bit nicer. There's still a hover on there. You could change the link color hover to also use my brand color, which is that color there. So now the links hover the right color, which is nice. You could change the background. All these things are available in OceanWP. It's actually pretty cool. I haven't found a theme that's been as easy to customize for all the basic header footer stuff. I mean, I was doing this new website for the client and I thought I'm going to use OceanWP and Elementor. Great combo, thumbs up. Give the video a thumbs up if you love them both as much as I do. And I thought to myself, this is not going to be possible without spending tons of money on a mega menu or a mobile menu or all this stuff. And it was really, really cool. So I'm going to give you guys one more bonus tip in this video, just something that I want you to think about. 
which is what happens when you go to your mobile menu. So I'm just going to force mobile menu here by inspecting the code and reducing the size of the page. And you see the mega, the mobile menu pops up here at, I think it's 980, 960 pixels, something like that. Again, you can set that in OceanWP. If you go into the customizer and you go back to the mobile menu, you can set at what breakpoint, how many pixels you want this to change. So it depends on how big your menu is because if your menu is really wide, you'll want this to trigger earlier because it'll get really squished really fast. So you might want to move it up to 1080 or 1280, um, which is going to help you out. You can do it in the code as well, but it gets really messy. So it's really cool to have that set in here. So let's say we're going to the mobile menu, which we've done here. But the problem is the mobile menu defaults to the main menu that I've set in the menu settings. And I forgot to mention that before, you have to make sure you click this main down the bottom in the menu settings. And there's also a mobile optional one here. So if you don't create a mobile menu, it automatically takes the main menu. The problem is, is it's got these sub menus columns, which are just there for the mega menu. They're not actually useful for the actual menu. So if you look at what happens, you get these sub sub menus and then to get to these links, even though they're sub links of services and they're just in columns, we get an extra level, which we don't want. So actually what you want to do is go in and create a new menu without these columns and just these links under services and put those as the mobile menu and save it as the mobile menu, which is what I did for my client. We created a mega menu and we created a mobile menu because yeah, otherwise you get a mess. So don't forget to do that. If you're doing the mega menu, create a second menu. So just go in here, create menu, call it the mobile menu, save it when you've checked the optional menu and just recreate the same menu here, but without the columns and just drag these straight under services or whatever it's gonna be in your case. So hope you found that really useful. This is all the tips that I gathered from creating my client's website in the last week. And give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already because you're gonna benefit from being on the list. If you wanna go and visit my website as well and check out my SEO and WordPress tips and reviews, it's madlemmings.com, I know, strange name. Um, and I'll see you guys or you'll see moi in the next video.